Welcome to part three of the Popful Mail Super Famicom speedrun guide. We're going into stage five here. You have to make a choice right away. You can do this first section with either mail or tat. I'll show you mail first here. With mail, shield block, and jump that is the safest way to do that. You can try to do an immediate jump. It's a little tricky. But basically here you're just jumping over everything. Uh, those bombs can hit you on the way down, uh, but they're not they're not going to do that much damage compared to everything else. It's okay to jump through them. You can also use Tat. Tat is on fire from his boss fights, so one, two there, jump over a bomb, one, two, jump over the bomb, immediately one, two, and then jump, jump. Either way, you'll want to use Tat to switch to bombs for the next room. I also like to use Tat for this uh, stair climb that's coming up here. His jump height is pretty perfect for it. This next room is just, it's annoying. <laughs> you just have to get used to it. Um, face right, bomb, destroy these guys, destroy those guys. Immediately switch to Gao to pick up his last fish meal to increase his power. Then you're going back to tap, leaving the room. Now we're going to drop down and to the left. You can hold down and jump to get through that platform really quickly. Um, here you just have to find a marker to get the timing for killing these guys. I like to use that first pillar. I definitely recommend killing that bomber and this bomber. These guys you can kill or not. If you run out of MP for level 3 bomb, it's a little easier to just go past them. There are some cutscenes here. These are some bounty hunters that we met earlier in the game. We didn't really see the guy too much uh, at all, really. So, um, you know, we're just getting some lore finishing here where they're going to give up and go home and, and enjoy their life together. Big heads up for the rest of this level. Uh, you will be slowly losing characters. First we will lose Gao, who will do a boss fight solo. Then we'll lose Tat. I like to use uh, the clouds here, this spot right here, to fire that first shot. There are two more of those soldiers there. Um, like you kind of have to blind fire. They're uh, able to hit you <laughs> off the screen, but you can't always attack them. Uh, then you do have to, I, I recommend killing those flying guys to go in the other way. Here, pretty early jump to kill that guy. You can jump over this guy or kill him, doesn't matter too much. That one I recommend killing, they can just kind of get in your way. Here, I recommend firing a shot, but just keep moving. It's okay if you get a little bit uh, touched by those guys, they don't do a ton. It is extremely helpful to kill these soldiers. If you touch them, you will go flying backwards unless they have already sh uh, thrown their spear. Here we get a last use of Gao for platforming. Notice that door up to the right. Uh, you can use that to unlock a shortcut. We won't. Um, here we're going to lose Gao. He, I think, smells the bad guy, so we are going to follow him. However, this room here is uh, kind of annoying. There's a lot of things happening here. We're going to do this again. There's a top route and a bottom route. To get a sense of where the top route is, you can simply drop down right here. This is the top route. You have to do pretty big jumps to get across. I'm going to do that again, but a bit more clean. So just get up here, jump all the way, and then just keep jumping all the way, and you will be on a good path. You do have to watch for this bomber. Uh, there is a lower path as well. You can just walk off, and then hold jump. You do want to watch for that uh, soldier. He will sometimes kind of wreck your day and be mean. Either way, you're going to get to this spot. You want to jump to this ladder. And then a big jump here, just to the right of those windows, is where that platform is. We're getting ready for a boss fight with Gao here. It is solo, you cannot pick which character, unlike the other bosses. This dude is Burklift. Burklift uh, likes to jump at you, and likes to burrow in the ground. So we're going to kind of take advantage of that. That's a sneaky early hit you can get by mashing jump. He's going to go one, two, three, four. And then we can get four hits, sometimes five. If it's possible to get five, you have to have pretty good timing on the first hit. I like to go for five because I, I know the timing well enough. Um, one thing to watch for, uh, you want him to do his first dash to the left. If he does his first dash to the right, it's possible that he will end up doing uh, five dashes which would be the fifth dash going to the right, and it will be an extremely long dash. He will go pretty much across the entire stadium here, uh, which is not great. 
Uh, but this fight is is pretty straightforward. Uh, you're just going to jump a lot. It's good that this fight is easy. Uh, we didn't use Gao very much in this game. We upgraded him very little. So it's very good that uh, he is uh, not too bad. So we're going to move on to some more platforming with Tat here. One thing I'll mention is that if you die uh, on Burklift, you restart the fight in Burklift. If you die after, you have finished him already. Um, this platform, and you'll see twice, um, there, it can go wrong in multiple ways. But basically, you want to kill these guys for the sake of being able to move. Here, I'm going to drop down to the right to get an item. It is armor for Tat. This is not required. Either way, you're going to move to the left again. Um, here, again, I like to do two bombs on that first bomber there. Yeah, you can kind of see what happened there. I, I missed the first shot and then just couldn't quite get it. Uh, but I like to do two shots on that first bomber, just to make sure. Um, you can skip this armor for Tat. I like to do that. Um, I don't find it is particularly necessary for him at this stage. And here we're going to switch to Mail, and we're just going to use her. Um, I do like to do sword swings on those soldiers as I'm jumping up to them, because sometimes they will decide, hey, I'm going to throw my spear at you now. If they do that, it will hit you. It'll do a lot of damage. So don't get hit is the short explanation of that. Uh, you can reflect their spears by hitting them with male sword, so that's why I like to swing at them. Uh, the timing usually works out. You're going to see this room several times. Um, there's a safe way through, which is this. Again, see that sword swing reflected that spear away and did not let it damage us. Um, you can jump over these uh, these things. Sometimes you can jump on top of them and not take damage. You saw there I took damage from one, but not the other. You'll see me jump on the others coming up here in a moment. There's a safer way to just, you know, walk under them as you're intended to, but for some reason, you can just jump on top of them. I'm not entirely clear why that is. And you'll switch to Tat to go through this door. Uh, if you don't use Tat, uh, you end up with a longer cutscene. So here's an example of walking under them as you're intended to do. If you find that you take damage too much from jumping on top, uh, just walk under. <laughs> it's safer. All right, we're going to see a faster method through this first part here. Jump up, immediately jump up. You can jump under that first boulder as well. Here again, you'll see jumping on top, you know, taking advantage of that. Nice spear reflection twice there, in fact. This is a really good version of this room. If I did this in a run, I'd be pretty happy. Again, not sure why exactly you can hop on those, you just can. Uh, I'm still figuring out the mechanics of it, but it seems to work the majority of the time. Here, do use Tat if you use Mail first. Uh, Tat makes a very long walk across the screen, uh, past where Mail is, so it is not ideal. Going into the next boss fight with Tat. You do want to be on bombs for this. We fortunately have been on bombs for the majority of this level. Uh, we see Meryl here, who was kidnapped by Desarodios earlier, and wouldn't you know, Desarodios is here. So we're going to fight him after this cutscene. Uh, Desarodios can be extremely rude. I apologize for a little pause there in the mashing. Uh, Desarodios can be very, very mean. Uh, basically, he will teleport and then do an attack of his choice. He will either do this laser attack which you'll see in a second. You've seen it a couple of times with him attacking the uh, the characters in the cutscene. But sometimes he'll appear and swoop down. If he swoops down, uh, good luck. <laughs> it's pretty bad. So this is what it would look like if you were trying to do this fight uh, vanilla and really struggling. Right? You would just you'd die. And then you would restart, and you would see him kind of floating toward you like this. Like, okay, well, that's, that's weird. So we're not going to do that, we're going to do some speedrun strats instead. Uh, immediately you're going to try to jump to the right and attack, and then get under him. Essentially you want to be under the middle of where he was, then he will appear slightly right of where you are standing. He will either do this laser attack, or he will swoop. Ideally he does the, the laser beam. And that's it. There's an alternate strategy. The last strategy was derived from uh, Simuente's uh, world record run. Uh, you also saw on that left side there a flame attack. You'll see it again. It's a little like flaming skull. Um, 
that's a random thing. There's nothing we can really do to influence it. Uh, but Salmonte's strat was to uh, kind of be on the right side, kind of keep moving to the right. This is Locke's strategy that he, he figured out. Uh, if you are on the right side here, right around this door, Deserodius will come hang out by this door. He will kind of be mean sometimes and give you a bad pattern, but generally he's just going to chill and he's going to fire his laser. And you just get to stand under him and attack. This is a little bit slower than an ideal fight, but it's pretty safe. It's pretty reliable. So if you're struggling with this boss, I recommend this strategy. It's definitely safer than trying to just kind of hang out right under him. After that, we are left with Mail and Mail alone. She will move through this room. If you look near the top middle of the screen in a second, you'll see a cape coming down. There it is. That's to kind of show that Tat is gone. So now we're stuck with Mail, and that's it. In this room, be ready, because there's a guy right here, <laughs> and if you're not ready for him, he will wreck your day. There's a lot of different ways to handle this. You can duck under and attack him, and then move. You can do something else with your shield. Just reflect it, and then move over. You can jump over his attack as well. And I want to show this again, because, fun fact, you can touch these enemies as long as they've thrown their spear already. If they're still holding their spear, don't touch them, they will push you back. But if they've thrown their spear, you can just walk through them. In any case, you're going to keep moving to the right and go into this room. I highly recommend jumping through this water. If those things on the ground touch you, they damage you, they also will pop up if you're on the ground long enough. Typically, jumping like that will avoid that. This is a key. We need keys to open doors. There are several locked doors in the area coming up. We need this key in order to get to the next part of the castle. So we're going to retrace our steps, move to the left. You can jump immediately there, so just bumper, buffer a jump, rather. And then move to the left here. This triggers a cutscene. This cutscene is about 2 minutes and 20 seconds from the last... Um, the last text box that you can control to the next text box that you can control. The reason we do this now, uh, even though we're going to go to the right in a second, uh, going to the left first and doing this cutscene clears out the enemies that are on the right side, at least some of them. There will still be two that you have to deal with, but it at least clears out a couple that would be kind of annoying to deal with. This also sets a checkpoint, so if you happen to die, you will be able to come back to this point. But I'm going to uh, just let the cutscene play out. Um, I don't have much to say at this point in terms of speedrun stuff. Um, this is a good chance to get some water, to uh, stretch for a second. It's 2 minutes and 20-ish seconds, so I like to set a 2 minute timer for myself and then start it once uh, I clear that last box. Um, so I know how much time I have if I needed to step, step away and get water or something. Um, so giving yourself two minutes to be back in your seat is, is good enough to be able to uh, come back and be ready. We do have a lot left <laughs> in this. Uh, we're only about 13 minutes into this video. Uh, it will be about 30 minutes. And so we have a lot left to talk about. So uh, be ready for that. Um, I will put a timestamp in the uh, description and in the chapters for when this cutscene is over.
So that is where the cutscene ends. We're going to take control back right here. You definitely should start mashing before that. You get to see uh, the baby dragon one last time. Then we'll have one final conversation here with one-eyed dragon. He'll disappear. He'll come back and tell us, hey, just one more thing. And then we're going to go to the right immediately. There are two more text boxes there as well, but uh, you just want to move to the right here. We're going to keep on walking. There would be a bomber in this hallway. There would be some of those, uh, they're little like sand monsters. It's kind of weird. Like in the water, but they're like mud monsters. Um, getting that chest is, is a piece of armor, if I remember correctly. This is a key that you definitely need. The armor, if you want to really, really push your time, um, you can skip it. Two ways to do this room. You can do what I did and stab that guy in the toe, or just jump jump over him. I don't mind little bits of damage. Those uh, rocket shooting guys don't do much. Two ways to deal with this bomber. Jump over the bombs, or kill it. If you get the timing right on the kill, it's probably faster. Uh, there is, so you're going to go through this first door. There is another door to the left that requires a key. It will get you, I believe, three apples. You will get one additional apple in this room. But if you really feel like you need the extra healing for the last boss, you can get those apples. I'm not going to make a video for that because I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think that it's required, uh, honestly. Um, I think that if you have purchased all the healing items possible up to this point, you will get an additional apple, which we just got. Uh, we need those two chests that we got in order to get an apple and a shield for mail for the end of the game. Um, I, I firmly believe that anyone can take on the final boss with just two apples and all the other healing items we got. So we saw our buddy there who likes to throw bombs one last time. He gave us a bomb. We're going to use it right here. If you remember that room where we got the final fish for Gao, this is the right side of that room. Unfortunately, you can't get this key early. You do have to get the bomb to get it. So now we get to redo the room that we did before. So we're going to climb up this ladder again. You can buffer a lot of the jumps here, so you'll see me holding B a lot and releasing it um, once the jump triggers. You can deflect this soldier's spear again. You're going to skip the chest this time. Obviously, you've already gotten them. That one on the left was the apple. This one was a shield. And there will be some flashing lights coming up. Um, there's really no way to avoid that if you're running the game, sorry to say. Uh, it'll be right here. And you see this cutscene where Material is using a sword. It is uh, the lightsaber. Uh, to summon an evil spirit known as Geistrace. Um, if you uh, followed the plot in that cutscene that we watched where you would probably take a break, uh, we learn more about Geistrace and uh, why he is the big bad for real. Uh, and Material just summoned him and woke him up, so that's not great. And so we find out that... Uh, this guy, Nutscracker, has been working for Material, apparently. Material seems to regret his choices in life. And so Nutscracker's gonna leave, and we're going to get control pretty quickly, because we didn't fall too far right here. One final conversation before we get to take this sword. You do want to mash B to equip the sword. There is a jingle like there usually is, so that's a good signal. And you want to immediately move to the right and through this door. Welcome to the final platforming area. Just a little bit longer here. The good news is that everything right now will do very little damage to mail, so you can be a bit more aggressive about ignoring enemies and things like that. Like that will do very little damage to you there. So it is okay to uh, kill them, it is okay to kind of pass them, they won't do a ton of damage to you anymore. As long as you got the armor and the shield that is. If you skip those, then it's different. I highly recommend healing up to full. Um, L menu, if, if you go over to your cherries, they will heal up a, a solid amount of your health. I believe it's about 50. Then we move into this door for one final conversation where Geistrace 
basically tells us, you can't beat me, all your friends are dead. And all of our friends will say, actually I'm not dead. Uh, spoiler alert. There we see. Gal, recover. And Geistrace is like, what? How dare you? And then Tat will recover from to the dead zone that he was sucked into. And Geistrace will say, how dare you? And then we will fight him. Uh, Geistrace has two forms. We're going to do a look at both forms. First, we're going to see a fight with the first form, which is blue. And then we'll see the red form very briefly. And you do want to press left and start attacking right away. Some moves that he has, he does this kind of shockwave out to the sides. He will typically do that when you're about even with him. If you're slightly below him, he will send his arm out. He will sometimes do a shot down like that. Sometimes he will do a shot that destroys platforms. So notice I'm trying to end this fight high on the screen. I'll talk about why. I failed at this point, and so now I'm going to be on the right side of the second form. This form is, is pretty rough. It has two arms to destroy, just like the first form. It has many different attacks that it likes to spam, including this fire. Uh, this fire is great for attacking it from the head. It is bad if you are below it. It does a lot of damage. So you'll see it shoots from its shoulders, it shoots from its arm, and then if you get stuck below it with that fire attack, you will die. So let's talk about how to conquer this boss. Um, for the first stage, you've got a couple options. You can go under it, like I'm trying to do here, and attack its face. Chances are you'll hit the arms as well doing this, so that works out pretty well. Um, I do like to finish this fight high. We'll see why when we get to the second phase. Um, you can also just kind of stay middle and attack the arms. You'll notice there are spikes on the ground. If you are holding jump, you will get a higher jump off of those every time. You'll notice his movement is two triangles. One has a higher point that finishes near the top. The other is the opposite shape, so it moves horizontally across the middle of the screen, and then the, the point is at the bottom there. That hand attack is pretty rude. It can really wreck your day. I'll show you an example. Like so. Yeah, it can just carry you across the whole screen, so just be mindful of that. So we're going to see this attack one, or sorry, this fight one more time just to see kind of a, a quick pattern, hopefully. You can get some up attacks if you happen to get on platforms right below his face. You can chase him around the whole arena and uh, hopefully get a pretty quick kill. The reason to end the fight high is for this. You want to, if possible, get these first hits in right away. It's okay if you don't, it just means you will definitely have to destroy an arm or two. But if you're able to get back on top, it's great. The down attacks do the most damage, and so you're pretty quickly able to take the boss out. Again, here's a starting high, but did not get in the right position, so I decided to go under. This is another attack you can do, those flames that move up can hurt you. If you get under, just be mindful he might use a fire attack on you. Uh, if he uses the flamethrower attack when you're under, it's extremely dangerous. If he does it low like this, it's great, because you're able to get on top of him. And so here's one where we started really high, but just couldn't get over far enough to the left, and so we have to destroy the arms. If possible, it's beneficial to stay on one side, so you can actually do damage. If you end up being stuck on the other side, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. If you need to heal during this fight, uh, do it. <laughs> if you die here, you start the blue phase all over again. So uh, just be mindful, it is okay to heal. It takes a little bit of time, but it's better to lose a little time healing than lose a, a good run because you died on the last boss. You'll notice almost all of my health is gone at this point because of where I was when that flamethrower attack started. We're going to see it one more time. Nice and clean, both phases. I was unfortunately not getting too many hits there, just not quite getting high enough with my attacks. Probably starting them a little bit too early, but that's alright. Got rid of one arm. 
And in this video, I was starting out trying to kill it high, still kind of thinking about doing that based on my movement. And so we ended pretty high and in the middle of the screen. It is helpful to do a pause buffer here, so you can kind of see where you are. And Geist Race did the good thing, he stayed in place. To do these down attacks, uh, hold down, attack, and jump. If you're holding jump, you will move through any platforms that you happen to land on, and that's to your benefit. Uh, I wasn't able to get on top here, but I was able to get the last few hits in and finish the final boss. Congratulations, if you did that, you have finished uh, the final boss then, but you're not done with the game yet. Uh, we do have to escape the tower. We get one final bit of conversation. And then it is on you to move out of the tower. So move to the left, go through the door for one more cutscene. See this running gag continue. We gotta move to the right. Drop down, drop down this ladder, and this ladder, and then move left. And then from here, it's all about getting clean jumps in. Uh, it is very easy to misremember where to jump. There's probably better ways to do it. Once you've done this, you go through the door, hold jump and hold left, and then jump and time. If you did this, congratulations. This game can be pretty tough. There are some tough bosses, and they take a lot of practice. But if you practice, if you put in the time, think about some strategies, try things on your own, ask questions. I believe that anyone can beat this game in sub 130. Uh, I believe getting sub 120 is definitely possible as well. I want to close with a few shout outs. Note that you can mash through the text boxes in this uh, credit sequence. Uh, you do not have to, of course. You are no longer on the timer, but uh, I definitely recommend showing the credits whenever you get a nice big PB. I like to give credit to the game creators because without them, uh, we wouldn't have the game speedrun. Next shout out would be for Solar Cell 007. Uh, Solar runs what I would call the Solar Speed League in his Discord. Uh, Solar Speed League, basically we pick a game that doesn't have very many runs completed uh, on a leaderboard, and we try to improve the speedrun and see what we can do with it. Really fun group of folks who run, we always learn a lot, we have a lot of fun creating strategies, sharing ideas, and improving a game. Um, I appreciate Solar especially for adding an extra week. Usually we do two weeks, uh, we did three weeks because uh, I, I asked and said, hey, I'm traveling, I would love to do this game. Uh, so we got an extra week and we were able to push the game a lot further than we, we would have otherwise. I want to shout out Sun Wenteng, who was uh, the one person on the leaderboard for this game when we started. Uh, definitely used his route to make uh, our runs possible. So we, we really appreciate that. I want to shout out DL Darklink, aka Lock, and Joey Mittens uh, because of their contributions to the run. Uh, I would not have been able to do this run as quickly as I did without their input and without their contributions to the strategies and different ways of getting through levels. Joey especially is really good at finding uh, very scary looking ways through platforming segments, but making them look really easy. Lock finds really great boss strategies, which are always very appreciated to make games faster. I really believe that speedrunning is a community effort, and uh, even though my, my run is the world record at the moment, uh, with a 110, um, I believe that anybody could beat it, <laughs> and I believe that uh, the more we share strategies, the more we can have fun with this game. Um, I really enjoyed learning the speedrun. Um, I clicked with this game in a way that I have not in a very long time, uh, which led me to want to make this video to help others get ready to play it. So I hope that it has been helpful for you. I want to shout you out as well if you've watched this far and you are interested in running the game. Um, I wish you the best. I wish you luck. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out. You can comment on any of the videos. You can reach out to me on Twitter, Discord, anything. Um, please feel free to chat with me about this game. I'm 100% happy to do that. So with all that said, I will end my voiceover of this. I will let the credits play through the end to give credit to the game developers because they, they put in the hard work of making this great product for us, um, and I, I really appreciate their efforts as well. Um, so with that said, uh, thank you again for watching. Please feel free to ask questions. I would love to see more people run this game and enjoy it. 
and uh, spread the word about how, how cool it is. So thank you again for watching.